Hey folks, welcome back. Hope everything's going well and you're staying safe. Uh, a few take home messages. First, hopefully everyone is completing those exams on time. Uh, please uh, go through the exam. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. But I go back through and I regrade them as you noticed from this previous exam. I decided to extend the time a little bit longer on the exams. Uh, hopefully that helps some you all. Obviously I can't do anything about um, those that want to use their notes. Uh, kind of is what it is. It's an online uh, test. So ideally I would like I would like you not to use your notes, but um, that's kind of hard for me to even uh, try and gauge uh, if you are. So that being said, let's get started. Let's talk about uh, the heart. Um, today's lecture is going to be about heart anatomy. I have a model here. We're going to go through the model. I'm going to talk about the different chambers of the heart and the veins, the main veins that come into the heart and bring blood into the heart and then blood leaving the heart and how that occurs. Um, we'll go into detail with physiology next week. Uh, we'll talk about ECG, electrocardiogram. Uh, we'll talk about the electroconductivity of the heart, how the heart depolarizes, how it starts at the SA node and goes through the AV node, and then what the contraction is like. I may touch a little bit today on physiology because uh, it's, it's hard to just describe the anatomy without talking about the physiology of the heart. Um, this will be one of the easiest tests you have this year. Remember, as I said previously in our face-to-face -face meetings. Um, but moving forward, uh, the next few exams will be not as easy, but, but pretty close to being uh, as easy as that. You can see here on my board, uh, we got some crazy drawing going on here. This is your assignment for this week. So you'll notice if you go online, what you have for this week, your to-do list is... Complete the last lower muscle exam. That was the lecture video from last week. Okay, uh, You have to complete that by Sunday. Also by Sunday, you need to complete the heart anatomy assignment. That is drawing this and labeling all the parts of this and then drawing uh, a separate diagram to label the coronary arteries and the coronary veins. Those are on your resource sheets. It's basically a plug and chug. You just want you to draw it and label it and then take a picture of it and upload it. Also, the last thing on your to-do list, so three things. The last thing on your to-do list is the heart anatomy quiz. Okay, It is in order. By the time we finish this lecture today, I'm going to give you in order what's on the heart anatomy quiz minus the last few questions okay but the majority of it in fact 16 questions out of the six or out of the 25 points um, i'm going to give you in order okay all right that being said uh let's go ahead and get started you know your to-do list for this week uh so let's uh talk about today's lecture okay the heart is made up of four chambers okay the four chambers are as so. We have our atriums, okay? If we draw a line straight across, uh, we have our right and left atriums, and then our right and left ventricle, okay? Our left ventricle is the most powerful portion of our heart. Our ventricles really are the most powerful portion of our heart. Our heart is muscle. It's made up of what's called cardiac muscle. It looks a little bit different uh, microscopically than what uh, mus musculoskeletal muscles look like or skeletal muscles, okay? Uh, cardiac muscle is a little bit different in the way the penation is, all right? You'll learn about that as you move on through in the exercise science program, okay? All right, so let's talk about the chambers. Uh, well, the right ventricle just opened up, right atrium, this model is uh, not intact, but this is the left atrium and then the left ventricle, okay? I behoove all of you to go online and look at different models and YouTube videos to describe this. Obviously, I'm not a video production artist. I can't make some fancy videos. I'm a lecturer at UNCW. So, I have the model, okay? But let's talk about the atriums and the ventricles. First off, the heart pumps not from one side to the other. The heart pumps from top to bottom. So what occurs, that 
lub dub that you hear is atriums contract, ventricles contract, atriums contract, ventricles contract. That lub dub, lub dub, lub dub. Okay. So in our atriums, blood comes into the first part of the heart, the right atrium. Blood comes from the superior vena cava, which is right here, and down below underneath, the inferior vena cava. So we have blood coming in from the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava. Everything from about our sternum up, okay? From right about here up, blood comes in from the superior vena cava. All, everything underneath that, blood comes in via the inferior vena cava, okay? There goes my left atrium. All right, so there's our inferior vena cava and superior vena cava. If I open up the right atrium, you can notice down in here, that is the inferior vena cava. And then the superior vena cava is right there. So that's the first area where blood comes in. Now, this blood that comes in is known as deoxygenated blood, okay? We don't say blood is uh, fully deoxygenated because it's never really fully deoxygenated, all right? But red blood cells will be deoxygenated, okay, or oxygen poor, better said, and comes into the right atrium. At this point, the purpose of the right side of the heart is to get the blood from the right atrium to the right ventricle. And then in this right ventricle here, the way that the blood travels from the right atrium to the right ventricle is through a valve. This valve is a one-way valve. You'll notice that right there. These, uh, this tissue, this soft tissue of this valve flaps closed and flaps open, okay? When the right ventricle contracts, the goal is to push blood to here, the pulmonary trunk, okay? So the right ventricle contracts, pushes blood through the pulmonary trunk. When it contracts, it forces this closed, okay? This right here is connected to muscles in the heart called papillary muscles. That is connected via tendons called the chordae tendinae. Okay? So once again, blood comes from the right atrium, goes through the valve. Okay? This valve right here is called the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle. From the right ventricle, contraction occurs and blood shoots up through the pulmonary trunk, specifically through another set of valves. That other set of valves is called the pulmonary semilunar valves, okay? So, recap, right side of the heart, all right? Remember, contraction is atriums, ventricles. However, deoxygenated blood or oxygen-poor blood comes in from the superior vena cava or the inferior vena cava into the right atrium, passes through the tricuspid valves, goes into the right ventricle, from the right ventricle up through the pulmonary semilunar valves and then into the pulmonary trunk, okay? So that is the right side of the heart, oxygen poor blood. At that point, the red blood cell travels from the pulmonary trunk. At this point, the pulmonary trunk splits into two, going to the left pulmonary artery and the right pulmonary artery, okay? Now here's a teaching cue. Arteries, we generally think of are oxygenated. Veins, we generally think of are deoxygenated. So oxygen-rich arteries, oxygen-poor veins. However, that's not the case. Arteries are called arteries because they go away from the heart. So any sort of blood vessel that goes away from the heart is called an artery. Any blood vessel that comes back to the heart is called a vein, okay? It just so happens that the majority of arteries are oxygen rich and the majority of veins are oxygen poor. 
Okay, so this is an example, the pulmonary trunk, and then the pulmonary artery, left, pulmonary artery, right, are examples of two arteries that have oxygen-poor blood. These pulmonary arteries go to the lungs so that the blood can be reoxygenated or become oxygen-rich. Okay, so right side of the heart, blood comes in, superior vena cava, inferior vena cava, comes into the right atrium, from the right atrium, goes to the right ventricle, through the tricuspid valve, okay? From this point, it goes up to the pulmonary trunk, through the pulmonary valve, into the pulmonary arteries, and then the lungs to become oxygenated. I know that can be a little confusing. That's why we got the diagram on the board, and we're gonna go over this in detail on the drawing. But first I wanna show you on the model, then I'm gonna show you on the board, and then we're gonna go through it step by step, roughly 16 steps, and that's the first 16 questions on your exam, okay? So, blood is in the lungs now. Okay, so oxygen, rich blood, is now coming back from the lungs. So oxygen rich blood comes back from the lungs via, so we have vessels coming to the heart, so they are called pulmonary veins at this point. Okay, so we had pulmonary arteries going away from the heart, oxygen poor blood, and then now we have oxygen rich blood coming back to the heart via the pulmonary veins. We had one Pulmonary artery on either side going to each lungs. On the way back to the heart, we have four pulmonary veins, and they go in right here and right here. And the goal of these is to get blood to the left atrium. You notice that oxygen-poor blood came in via the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava into the right atrium. So they come in via the back side of the heart, the posterior aspect of the heart, and they go into the left atrium. I'm going to go ahead and remove that from the left atrium. The pulmonary trunk comes off there because it on, sits on top of the left atrium. And then if we look closely inside, let me see if I can get a good angle here. We can see, okay, right there, well, let me get my bearings, right here. And here are two holes, okay? So there and there are two holes uh, for the left pulmonary veins coming back in. All right, so you can see those two holes there. And then if I rotate around, you see those two holes right there? Those are the right, the entrance, or the uh, where red blood cells, oxygen-rich red blood cells coming from the lungs, through the pulmonary veins come into the left atrium, all right? So right there's one side, and then there's the other side, and then that's the left atrium, okay? From the left atrium, blood comes through another set of valves, from the left atrium to the left ventricle, okay? Another set of valves. These valves are called bicuspid valves, or mitral valve, all right? So two names, bicuspid valve and mitral valve. So blood comes from the left atrium, oxygen-rich blood from the lungs through the mitral valve into the left ventricle. The left ventricle, the job of the left ventricle is to pump blood. You see right there that hole, okay? That hole all the way through right there, next to the mitral valve, that hole is what's called the aortic semilunar valve. That is responsible for allowing blood to flow through into the aortic trunk, all right, which eventually becomes the aorta. So the left ventricle, when it contracts, forces the mitral valve shut or the bicuspid valve shut similar to the right ventricle. When it contracts, ejecting blood into the pulmonary trunk, it forces the tricuspid valve shut. 
we want these valves to shut, okay? If these valves, the bicuspid and the tricuspid valve, if these valves don't shut when contraction occurs, if they're not working properly, we get what's called backflow, all right? Backflow into the atriums. That's a gurgling sound. That's not good. We don't want backflow, all right? That backflow is also called a heart murmur. So if you've ever talked to an individual and they say, oh, I have a heart murmur, like for example, my mom, she has a heart murmur. She got a heart murmur from pregnancy, okay, when she was giving birth. Um, so if backflow occurs, then that can result in a heart murmur, okay? That gurgling sound occurs when you do heart auscultations to listen to the heart, all right? And if we have enough time today, we'll talk about heart auscultations. Uh, depending on how long this video gets, or we may table that to next week, all right? So, left side of the heart, blood comes in from the lungs, oxygen-rich blood into the left atrium, passes from the left atrium through the mitral valve into the left ventricle. From there, goes through the aortic semilunar valve into the... I have to lift open the right atrium so that you can get a good look and see the aortic trunk. Here's the aortic trunk, okay? And the aortic trunk then disperses blood or blood ejects through the aortic trunk into the aortic arch and then eventually the aorta, okay? That's well, really all the aorta, but we call it the aortic trunk, the aortic arch, and then here we have several other blood vessels or arteries that branch upwards and go into our neck, like our carotid artery or our brachial cephalic artery, our subclavian artery. All those arteries we're going to learn um, in roughly two weeks when we talk about the cardiovascular system in that lecture. Okay? So that is how one red blood cell travels through when that lub dub occurs. So this happens approximately 60 times a minute, right? On average, our heart rate is around 60 beats per minute, okay? So that one red blood cell, and there's millions of red blood cells, travels through the heart just like that. Now let's draw it on our diagram and let's talk about our diagram. Okay, we got our one red blood cell. I'm gonna write in blue the different areas of where uh, blood can come in and out and how it moves, all right? This is the first 16 questions on your test in order, 1 through 16. I'm not going to write 1 through 16 on the board, but I'm going to talk about it and I'm going to label everything, okay? I'm going to use abbreviations. Now, like I said, I would behoove all of you to look at another video on YouTube talking about how blood travels through the heart because there's some really good videos on animation. However, I wanted to do my own, like I would do in class. So this is just like how I do it in class, okay? And I'm gonna use abbreviations for your exam. There's no abbreviations. It's just the straight up letters written out, okay? So, red blood cell comes in to the right ventricle, okay? Remember, contraction, atriums, then ventricle. That's how it occurs, however, Right side of the heart, let's talk about that first. Blood comes in via the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava. This is the SV, superior vena cava, down here. IV, inferior vena cava, okay? So we have blood that comes in from the lower body through the inferior vena cava, blood that comes in from the upper body through the superior vena cava. Both come into the right ventricle. Okay, so this is my, or excuse me, right atrium. Sorry about that. This is my right atrium. Okay. Superior vena cava, inferior vena cava. Blood comes in. Then, blood is in our right atrium. From this point, this oxygen-poor blood comes through the right atrium. When that love dub occurs, blows open this tricuspid valve. So this right here is the tricuspid valve. Now that's all one word, tricuspid. 
uh, but I wrote it as two because I don't have enough room. It's a small whiteboard, all right? <clears throat> so this is our tricuspid valve. So blood goes through that. This is the chordae tendinae, and they attach onto the papillary muscles. The chordae tendinae and the papillary muscles are not on your test, okay? What is on your test, we'll go over at the end. So blood goes through the tricuspid valve. From here, blood is in the right ventricle, right atrium, right ventricle, okay? From here, blood goes through this valve right here. This valve is the pulmonary. Semilunar valve, the pulmonary semilunar valve. Blood passes through the pulmonary semilunar valve into the pulmonary trunk. From the pulmonary trunk, the pulmonary trunk branches off into the right, <clears throat> or excuse me, right and left pulmonary arteries. This is one of the only arteries that have oxygen poor blood in the body. Okay? So we have our right and our left pulmonary arteries. From there, the pulmonary arteries go into the lungs. From the lungs, the blood becomes oxygenated rich and it comes back to the heart into the left atrium the left atrium via these guys right here, two on either side. They come all the way through, okay, and go into the left atrium. These are the pulmonary veins. So we have two pulmonary veins on the right, two pulmonary veins on the left, and it brings oxygenated rich blood into the left atrium. From the left atrium, Blood travels through, contraction occurs, passes through the mitral valve. Okay, passes through the mitral valve. From the mitral valve, it's also called the bicuspid valve. Okay, mitral or bicuspid valve. Let me fix that M. All right goes into the left ventricle, okay? From this point here, blood is ejected through the aortic semilunar valve, okay? Aortic semilunar valve. Then blood travels up into the aortic trunk, eventually going into the aortic arch, and then eventually the aorta and the body, okay? So, starting from your test, we have blood coming in via the superior vena cava, inferior vena cava, into the right atrium, from the right atrium through the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle. From the right ventricle, we have blood that goes through the pulmonary semilunar valve. From the pulmonary semilunar valve goes into the pulmonary trunk. From the pulmonary trunk, Blood travels to the pulmonary arteries. Then blood gets to the lungs, becomes oxygenated. From the lungs, blood goes back to the heart into the left atrium via the pulmonary veins. From the pulmonary uh, veins, blood is, remember, oxygen rich. These are one of the only veins in the human body that we have oxygen-rich blood going into the left atrium. From the left atrium, the red blood cell passes through the bicuspid valve. 
Once it passes the bicuspid valve or the mitral valve, it's in the left ventricle. Then that red blood cell gets ejected through the aortic semilunar valve into the aortic trunk, then the aortic arch, and then the body. Okay? That is your test in that order. After that, we're going to go over some coronary arteries and talk about the coronary arteries and the coronary veins. And then you're going to have some exam questions from that. Okay? All right. Okay, guys. Now let's talk about cardiac arteries or coronary arteries and cardiac veins or coronary veins. Okay? So, as I said earlier, the heart is a muscle. It's cardiac muscle, okay? So, the heart, there's my left atrium again, the heart needs blood, just like any other muscle. If the heart uh, ceases to get blood or no longer gets an adequate amount of oxygen-rich blood and is able to remove waste products such as hydrogen ions and CO2 and other waste products such as acids, then the heart can begin to... Uh, become arrhythmic uh, or seize up. Before I get into that, because I want to talk a little bit about how the heart seizes up and how the heart can have necrotic tissue uh, because of a lack of blood supply, I want to go over the coronary arteries first. Okay, This is also part of your assignment. You have to draw this up as well as your cardiac veins, which is going to be next. But first is this one. All right, you can see on the model, we have uh, arteries and veins coming throughout the heart that supply blood to the heart and removes waste products. So let's go over those real quick, and then we'll go over the cardiac veins. And then I want to teach you a little bit about um, how arrhythmia may occur, or how tachycardia can occur, and basically what a heart attack is. All right, so first let's get into this. So... Blood to the heart is actually supplied right at the aorta. So at the aortic trunk, we have a split off of the coronary arteries. Okay, On the right side of the heart, we have a right atrium and right ventricle here. On the right side of the heart, uh, coming off of the aortic trunk. Okay, Here's our aortic trunk coming from the left ventricle. All right, Coming right off of the aortic trunk is the right coronary artery. In healthcare, we have abbreviations for these, okay? This is the RCA, the right coronary artery. Pretty easy to remember. The right coronary artery has several branches off of it, some smaller arteries. Not important for your test for you to know this week. If you're planning on doing something in cardiology, maybe cardiac rehab, then you're gonna have to know this in depth. Uh, right cardiac, or right coronary artery right here. This branches off to the side of the heart. If I pick up my heart and come back, we see our right coronary artery. And then here we have a branch off. This branches off to the side of the heart. Okay. This branch right here, the acronym for it, or the abbreviation is AM, which means acute marginal artery. Okay. It's known as the marginal artery, all right? So right coronary artery branches off to the right, uh, mar or excuse me, the marginal artery here on this side, okay? From this point here, the right coronary artery continues on and goes around these dashes to denote the posterior aspect of the heart. So anywhere we see dashes on my whiteboard, that's the posterior aspect of the heart. Okay, rather than me flipping it around and drawing it all again, I did dashes. So that right coronary artery feeds into the marginal artery. You need to know that one. You need to know the right coronary artery. And then that right coronary artery goes posterior along the posterior aspect, comes down, and becomes a part of the posterior interventricular artery. That is shown here. It's going to be a little hard because I can't take this up. Oh, never mind, I just did. That is shown right here. 
Okay, I'll zoom in. We come from the right coronary artery, marginal artery along the side, and then right here as this comes around the heart, this turns into the posterior interventricular artery. Inter meaning in between the two ventricles, posterior interventricular. And remember when we talked about muscles and other things in anatomy, if we have a anatomical directional term and a vocabulary word like interventricular artery, so a posterior something, there's always going to be a anterior something. Hopefully you said that with me. You've heard me say that a bunch of uh, a bunch of times in our face-to-face -face meeting. So, posterior interventricular artery here. That's down this way. That's also called, in healthcare, the PDA, the posterior descending artery. Okay? So, the posterior interventricular artery is right here, also known as the PDA. All right? You need to know it as the posterior interventricular artery on the back side. Okay, if we look at the left side of the heart for cardiac arteries or coronary arteries, we have behind the pulmonary trunk. So it's pretty hard to see here because we have our pulmonary trunk. Okay, so behind the pulmonary trunk comes the left coronary artery. So we have to remove that. And then we can see, I'm going to zoom all the way in, and right through here, that is our left coronary artery, okay? On the board, it's denoted with dashes. So LCA is the abbreviation for that. Left coronary artery behind the pulmonary trunk. That then goes through, the left coronary artery comes through, and it becomes what's called the circumflex artery. Okay, the circumflex coronary artery, denoted with a CX, okay? That circumflex artery, before it becomes the circumflex artery, branches off, okay? So it's the left coronary artery, then it branches off. It's also known as the left main. The left main branches off to become the anterior interventricular artery, a really important artery. This one leads to an artery that we nickname the Widowmaker. Why is it called the Widowmaker? Well, that's because this artery tends to become filled with clot, okay, or plaque, I should better say, and it can become clotted or uh, occluded. And that artery leads to the left ventricle. It's called the anterior interventricular artery, but the branches lead to the left ventricle. By far one of the most important aspects of our heart because it ejects blood into the aorta, all right? All aspects of the heart are really important, and we'll talk about that in arthrosclerosis. Arthrosclerosis is when plaque builds up in one of these arteries. If plaque builds up here in the, anter in, or the anterior interventricular artery, then this is a problem. We can get what's called necrotic tissue in the heart, okay? That necrotic tissue is dead tissue. That means it no longer contracts. It's no longer viable for that electrical current to disperse through it. That changes what's called the vector of the heart or the electrical vector of the heart. The electrical vector in the heart points in this direction because that electricity... That's good. That electricity comes from one side of the heart down to the other. Okay, so if we have necrotic tissue here because we have plaque buildup, then that electricity or the depolarization, as we're going to talk about next week, that depolarization as it comes down through um, does not uh, come through the portion that is dead, the dead tissue. So then what happens is, is this left ventricle no longer becomes the strongest ejection point of the heart. So then what can become stronger as an ejection point? The right ventricle. Well, that's not good because if this portion is stronger at ejecting blood than this portion, then that means we're going to have a backup in the system. And there's going to be too much blood backed up and we're going to have arrhythmia. We're going to have a problem where more blood is ejected 
to the lungs and blood comes back and not enough blood is ejecting out of the heart of the, of the left ventricle, okay, and that's a problem. All right, eventually then our heart receives signals called baroreceptors in our arteries near our heart that talk about pressure changes and communicate pressure changes neurologically uh, through our autonomic nervous system that then tells our heart, hey, speed up that contraction because that pressure is not high enough just outside of there. Or maybe the blood pressure is too high or too low. Anyways, we'll talk about blood pressure um, and that arrhythmia and that depolarization that occurs in the heart in the next video. That's next week, okay, for those of you that are following along in the class, all right? So back to the arteries. Left side of the heart, left coronary artery, then goes into the circumflex artery. That branches off before the circumflex artery becomes the anterior interventricular artery, okay? That anterior interventricular artery, the Widowmaker, is also known as the LAD. That's the acronym for it, okay? That LAD stands for left anterior descending artery. Left anterior descending artery. For your test, you need to know anterior interventricular artery, okay? Then we have the circumflex artery. That circumflex artery here, you can see it, it's denoted. It's hard to see with small dashes on the posterior aspect. Okay, That eventually joins up with the uh, posterior interventricular artery there. All right, So that is coronary arteries. Right side, right coronary artery, marginal artery, back side, posterior interventricular artery. Left side, left coronary artery, circumflex artery, circumducts, it goes around the heart. Then anterior interventricular artery, really important artery right there. All right, those are the coronary arteries. Okay, the last thing that I want to talk about with you guys is coronary veins. I'm not going to draw those up on the board, but you need to draw that up for your assignment. Okay, you can go ahead and use your resource sheet that is on the assignment link. All right, we have a few things to discuss with this. I'm probably not going to test you on coronary uh, veins or cardiac veins, but I want you to go ahead and do that assignment and draw them up like this. Okay, this is coronary arteries, but it's going to be similar. You can do it in blue if you want. A lot of times we denote oxygen poor with blue. So veins are the blood vessels that bring blood from the heart and waste products back through to the right atrium. Remember, everything goes to the right atrium, to then the right ventricle, to then eventually the lungs to be ejected out. Okay? So there's a few veins that are really important. First, on the anterior aspect, this vein that's coming off, this real big vein that's right next to the anterior interventricular artery, this vein... Okay, there's the anterior interventricular artery. Then we have this large vein right here. This vein is called the great cardiac vein. Okay, the great cardiac vein. Just distal to the great cardiac vein, we have the anterior cardiac vein. Okay, on the posterior aspect, the first thing you notice, besides seeing the inferior vena cava, is this giant vein through here. Okay, this giant vein back in here is called the coronary sinus, all right, the coronary sinus. On that back side, you'll also notice this large vein going through the middle, right next to the posterior interventricular artery. We have this large vein going through here. This large vein is called the middle cardiac vein. Pretty easy to remember. It's right in the middle of the posterior aspect of the heart, okay? Lastly, the last one I want you to learn about and remember is here on this, uh, the right aspect of the heart. So the right side of the heart, we have our right atrium, our right ventricle. On this right aspect of the heart, we have a small little vein that comes across. That is called the small cardiac vein. Pretty easy, right? The veins are pretty easy. I'm probably not going to test you on those, but go ahead and make sure that you do those for the assignment. So for your assignment, you need to draw the anatomy of the heart, 
trace out one red blood cell as it goes through each compartment of the heart and I want you to name each compartment. So go ahead and point it out like I did on the board. Then I want you to draw out this right here. Draw your heart and label all of the cardiac arteries. Then draw another heart and label the important cardiac veins all on your resource link for the assignment. Okay. Then go ahead and take pictures of those or scan them in and uh, submit them to the assignment link. Okay. Then you also have the quiz to do. All right. That is it for today. Uh, hopefully you guys uh, watched the whole video. Um, I will see you all next week uh, when I post my next video. and We'll talk about ECG or EKG, electrocardiogram. Uh, we'll talk about blood pressure. We'll talk about heart auscultations. Um, a lot to talk about in that video. So that one's going to be pretty long, and we'll see how I'm going to formulate that test. But from here on out, the tests get pretty easy, okay? So this week, don't forget your to-do list, your heart assignment, your heart quiz, and your lower body muscular quiz, okay? I extended the time on all of it to be roughly 25 minutes. You should be able to knock it all out. It's 25 points, so pretty easy quizzes. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to email me. All right, hope you guys are all doing well during this COVID-19 craziness that's going on, and I will see you next time.